Hi everyone, this is June Sekiguchi, your curator at University House Wallingford. I'm so thrilled to give you a brand new show for you to look at and just kind of fill your life with some new art. So this show is called Like Mother and it was originally curated by artist Kelly Lyles who is in this show with her own work and it's been a traveling exhibition. So um, it's gone to Tacoma Art Museum, it's gone to Vashon Center for the Arts, um, Gallery One in Ellensburg, and Art Exchange for, as a few examples. It's gone to other places as well. Um, with the traveling exhibit, we have 23 artists, but University House Wallingford is such a large location that I opened it up to an open call for artists. So we accepted 11 artists for the open call. And then of course, we always have the active residents here at University House Wallingford to participate in the show with their original works, uh, occasionally uh, some collection of their, work, of their art um, that they've collected as well as family members. So we have 14 uh, residents or family members that are participating with a total number of 82 pieces of art. So we always have a good turnout and I'm just very pleased to share with you this show, Like Mother. The show talks about that relationship between a mother and a child. And it's a show kind of full of love, but it also is about processing loss. It's also about processing difficult relationships at times too. So you can think about all those things as you're looking at the art and, and seeing what you see in the art. So I wanna just talk about a few pieces. Um, there's too many to talk about individually. So let me um, take a pause and show you some of the art. The first piece I wanted to talk to you about is by Liva Halverson. It's called My Mother's Umbrella, and it's on the lobby level, just directly across from the elevators. So Liza's kind of remembering her mother uh, in the place where they eventually lived. They moved from Southern California to British Columbia and then spent time uh, in this area. So if I zoom in closer, you can kind of see from the shape of an umbrella is the uh, topographical map of the Salish Sea area with Tahoma with that blue dot, Mount Tahoma, otherwise known as Mount Rainier, and the rivers and glaciers coming off the mountain and into the Salish Sea. Can you identify Seattle, the San Juan Islands, Vancouver Island, and the Salish Sea? So this is a tribute to her mother who had to give up her passion of design and um, in order to go uh, with her husband who served as, in the military as a pilot, and so they'd have to go to different um, military bases. So she kind of gave up her career, um, and so she took some silk that her father gave her and made this um, tribute to her mother in this umbrella form, because the Northwest, as you know, is. Um, there's plenty of rain and use of umbrellas. So Liza is honoring her mother and the sacrifices that people had to make in World War II uh, in order to help their families and the country. Here's a grouping of small works in the foyer, in the lobby. And these are two artists, Joan Stewart Ross, doing encaustic and using bits from her mother's uh, collection of fabrics and uh, ephemera. So we have three of Jones. Sorry, the lighting is a little harsh on this one. And she's using encaustic, which is hot wax, in order to embed the materials and color into the, the painting. So I put Joan Stewart Ross's work with the next artist, her name is Deborah Faye Lawrence. Similar size, she's doing collage work, and both Deborah and Joan are really processing loss, the loss of their mothers and fathers included. But um, 
just kind of intuitively working with images, composition, papers, and a variety of elements just to do a, you know, just process as people do, and especially artists, by just taking materials at hand and um, working through their thoughts of their loved one. So this is actually on linoleum. And the final one in this series. Okay. I'd like to highlight the original curator of this show, Kelly Lyles, and she has painted her self-portrait on the left with an image of her mother in the middle and her grandmother on the right. So all three women were very vibrant, active, very socially engaged, and Kelly especially. So she's honoring her mother through and her grandmother through this triptych. And in her mother's passing, reading her obituary, she realized what an amazing person her mother was beyond what she just knew her as mom. So that inspired this whole show. One more aspect I wanted to show you is there is a backside, but I couldn't quite couldn't quite um, show both sides of the thing. So I like to group art that is kind of similar to each other. In this way, it is about material. So they're using different forms of material, and they're saying very different statements as well. But to first go to the quilt by Deborah Ann. This is her mother and her aunt, and they were quite different from who Deborah is. Deborah felt like she was never quite heard or accepted, that her mother and her, her aunt always had to be right. So that was a difficult environment to be in for Deborah. So it's something that she's processing, and it's called The Color of Four Hands Talking. And next we have Lisa Myers Bullmash with this wonderful assemblage of found objects. So Lisa always has a lot of content in her work, a lot of times about African American history and treatment. This one is called Give Us a Hug. And then next to Lisa is Marita Dingus. I'm so honored to have all these artists, such stellar quality of work that they do and history of art that they've done in this region. So this is Marita's work called Maxine, after her mother. This is very kind of typical way of, of uh, Marita to work using kind of real raw energy in the sculptures that she creates. So. I hope you all read the text panels that gives you a little bit of insight into the artwork and what the artist was talking about, thinking about. She wanted to honor her mother in the color green and with flowers and that her mother inspired her to make things with her hands. Suze Wolf is a watercolor painter, but she also uses technology in her work too. So she's expanded her medium to using plexiglass in this artwork. And here she's depicting her mother, her daughter, and herself in a portrait with all three. And what Sue, Suze describes is um, a commonality between the three is this balance of science and art in all three women. Steve Jensen made this funerary vessel for his mother. He is Norwegian uh, by ancestry, and it is the practice of Norwegians anciently to send ashes out to the sea in a boat. And so he's created these vessels. This one's called Pat for his mother. So Pat struggled at the very end of her life. Her husband died by suicide two years before her own death, somehow Pat internalized that and just kind of de deteriorated from there. 
So Steve Jensen has made this piece in honor of his mother. So there's a shroud of her portrait covering it. And then all the bits and elements are from Pat's collection of jewelry. I think there's a driver's license in there, but all these little trinkets that come from Pat's life. And next to it is Carol Milne doing cast glass and using, uh, kind of creating um, crocheted or knitted uh, tops to these bombs. They're called genetic time bomb series. So Carol is talking about how she is becoming more and more like her mother. She might say something that um, surprises her that that sounds just like my mother or someone might comment that she looks like her mother as she's getting older. So she, Carol asked the question, are you ready for that? Are you ready to explode? So she has a kind of humorous way of thinking, looking at things. And above that is Saya Moriyasu, who is a ceramicist and a public artist. And she created this little kind of amulet. It's a lotus pocket deity, butter wing, butterfly wing mother. So inside it is inspired by Kuan Yin, the Bodhisattva of compassion. And it's hinged in a kind of nutshell where you can just close it up and put it in your pocket. And it's kind of a very beautiful protective talisman. And next to that is Malpina Chan with her bronze, cast bronze juk. It's and sticky rice. And this was in her mother's freezer for maybe 20 years. And Malpina took it out and had it cast in bronze. So food was a very big element of their family life and a way to remember and feel nostalgic and honor our mothers. So next to that, outside, Malpina is a printmaker. So she's made this beautiful print using old photographs from her family collection. So that's her mother with her on her lap on the right. She learned much from her mother about respect. Kristen Maddox, this is a very pivotal piece in making it to heal her relationship with her mother. Uh, previous to this project, she was invited to do a self or a portrait of her mother among other artists, all the same format, all the same palette. And Kristen had a kind of separation from her mother for several years, but when her mother sat for this portrait over several sessions, there relationship healed. So art has made their lives more complete. And I have beautiful works by Rosari Lynch with pinhole photography and this mysterious, ethereal, beautiful garment in this room. And a piece by Deborah Kapoor. A photo on Kozo paper, and it's a portrait of her mother's eye. Her mother sang an aria from La Boheme, and her son, not knowing that, loved that same piece of music. So Deborah loved the connection of music crossing generations. We have David Francis with a found object assemblage on the left, Lauren Ida with cut paper in the middle, and Jane Orleman with a painting on the right. So I'll start with Jane. She's really working out and processing things from her childhood. This piece is called Go Make Your Daddy Happy. In her family, she was the one that, that was her responsibility, trying to make her father happy, who was never happy, and that her mother gave her that job to do. So it's something that Jane is processing through this painting. Please read the text panel that Lauren Ida has put along with her artwork 
She typically does cut paperwork, quite beautiful. And this is about the difficult relationship she has with her mother. So this is called Nourish slash Devour. And you can see scissors and kind of a division between the two people. And then David Francis has used this found box to kind of process his mother's passing at the same time his um, her sister passed away, who was a kind of second mother to him. And so when he was cleaning out her possessions, he came across a lot of papers. And so he kind of put them in this in this turnstile wheel and turning it it made him kind of feel released from from the past or maybe to go on in the future and the front is um, incense sticks with mirrors and newspaper text so a beautiful assemblage a beautiful example of art that came from the call for art is Elisa Wolcott with this slip cast porcelain piece called Mother Daughter with a very strong image and co symbolic color of red, the tension of the strings, the tangles, very powerful. We are so lucky to have the work of collaborators and partners Jenny Pullman and Sabrina Knowles in their creation honoring Sabrina's mother, Ruth. So Jenny and Sabrina collaborate in most of their projects. They're glass artists and then they also do metal work to support the glass work. So they've invented a printing process that transfers images onto glass. So these are different parts of Ruth's life. She lived to be almost 100 years old. And what struck Jenny and Sabrina is that in that 100 years, how much has changed, really, for women's rights, for racial equality, all of that kind of thing. This is a delicate piece by Dean Chow. She's honoring her mother who taught her how to sew and embroider. And she's placed this embroidery portrait of her mother, who is a seamstress, on this silk over porcelain dish. Very delicate. On the other side is Maura Donegan. Maura comes from a long line of women who were seamstresses, embroiderers, um, dressmakers, anything with um, textiles. So Mora has done this embroidery and then as well as pulled fabrics out. So there's a random collection of words. Mora's from Ireland. So please take a look and see what you can decipher from this beautiful and another delicate piece of fiber art. This woodblock print is by Dion Haratunian called Unfurl and Reach 2. So this is one of a series of these prints that she's made on this kind of high profile side of a tree that was at her house in uh, Switzerland and it gave her much comfort especially when her mother was passing and she could sit under that tree and find some sense of peace. So I think a lot of these pieces talk about sense of place as well as processing all emotions. So now we've come to the corridor and this has the selection of the call for art. So the outside artists, they weren't part of the original traveling exhibition but have contributed wonderful pieces to this theme. Olga Bolger, 
when she sin this is by Paula Drayton's mother June Hartley so this is a painting from the 1940s or 50s quite lovely painting and perfect for the theme and then we have Lynn Danino who is a very respected artist in our area. She won the Governor's Award for the Arts a few years back. Lynn typically does humorous um, sculptural works, talking about um, social injustices or just quirky things. She kind of does uh, visual puns. But when she was thinking about the theme, like Mother, she was really having trouble translating that to her own work. So instead of doing a sculptural form, she decided to go through her family's archives and select images to speak about this relationship of her mother. She starts her text panel as, my relationship with my mother was fraught. She raised five kids by herself and was very cranky. So it's a, another a difficult relationship that she's processing um, she's come to realize that her own hands have become the hands of her mother. So she really enjoyed the process of thinking about her mother, about her life and circumstances, and I thought it was very interesting that Lynn chose to use a two-dimensional collage type of way to interpret the theme. I'll switch around. These are really interesting pieces, mixed media pieces by Carol Landisman. They all include her family's hair that's embroidered into the work. So the ties that bind is, called, is what this piece is called, and it speaks to their Jewish heritage. And next to it is Moral Compass, and this has four braids from her mother so that her mother can guide her therefore called moral compass and just take a look at some other works by Gwen Shi Tsen and beautiful painterly photographs by Leah Maminta Smith called I Am Here, and another one, Mother and Daughter as Water Falls. And finally on this wall is a colored pencil creation by Keith Arts. So it's almost photographic-like, but it's made with colored pencil. Phil Stoiber's contributions are these envelopes and letters from his mother. So it gave him at the time, as well as now looking back and working on this project, a sense of comfort and happiness to receive these letters from his mother. And it honors also the, the art of letter writing, which is becoming a lost art. And across the way, quite different from Phil's, are these very colorful pieces made of different mediums. So we have uh, three generations of women artists who are compiled in one piece, one small piece, and uh, it has Cynthia Yachtman, the artist, on the left-hand side with her mother and her daughter in stripes to create one cohesive piece with three generations. And Debbie Palmer uses tin as her medium, and they always are very bright and cheerful and humorous. This one's called Mother's Lesson. Just a fun new medium, different medium. And then we have Jane Goldson, A Life Holding Hands. So it's very gratifying to present the work of University House Wallingford active artists and residents. So we have beautiful 
quilt work of Donna Lee von Falkenberg Rick Ripley with her award-winning quilt called Storybook Farms. So just amazing detail, all appliqued and quilted by hand. We have the always thoughtful, provocative collage work of Cynthia Adcock. Take some time and look at the elements that Cynthia is putting in her collages and think about what story she's telling. There's a little bit of hint with the title, All Children of Nature. Please tell us This one's called Cleansing the Earth, or, I'm sorry, Cleansing Our Planet. And be here now. The older woman is wondering why everybody is looking off into space in different directions. And we have two sweet watercolor paintings by Willa Halperin. Beautiful still life. So it's nice that we don't have to depict actual mothers with their child, but maybe something what, that, what she would nourish her child with. So this is beautiful handling of the watercolor paint by Willa Halperin. And a spring garden. Willa said that she and her mother both loved to garden. So this is from their house previously. Beautiful floral garden. We t added two images on either side of Akira Sato's beautiful ink drawing. So we have flanking the large, long, horizontal ink landscape are two images to fill out the space above the banquette. This is a bright entry into the residence gallery with a Mother's Day card, and this was on the envelope of the card, to Margaret White from her son Tom. So that's just a sweet gift to his mother. And then we have Joe Adcock with his beautiful line drawings, very simple but right on, and they all talk about the relationship of mothers or being mothers and grandmothers. A more fully developed watercolor painting called Mama Limonera. And a wonderful drawing with watercolor. Granny taking a rest. This is Anita Warm Flash by Joe Adcock. And then Doug Acker has given us three beautiful drawings and a painting, or two drawings and one painting. Very skilled. This is called An Unknown Woman in graphite. This is called Indigenous Woman in graphite very small mother and child in watercolor. Here's some more Cynthia Adcock collage work called One Heart Soul. And then we have four photographs by Walt Halperin. This is Willa with Michael, one hour old, mother and child. Sweet picture, taking it easy, Charlotte Amali Town in St. Thomas. This is in Eugene, Oregon, where they bicycle a lot, mother and daughter cyclists. And 
finally, Michaela, who was running a marathon with her child in the cart. Wonderful dedication. We have a sweet watercolor by Yasuko Kodama with a mother duck and her babies. A wonderful depiction of this theme. And then speaking to that is Margaret White's other son, one of her other sons, David White, who is the duck with the glasses. A new addition to the show is a beautiful watercolor painting by Vel Gerth in Goals Play Together. So continuing that kind of bird theme. Finally, we have a beautiful wood piece in the collection of, of uh, J. Bishop, and this is by the artist Leon Bible. J. says this piece was made during the Depression, and people this artist used what he had on hand, which is plywood, so he was able to create art, even in the hardest of times. This is a beautiful wood piece, seeming to have face-like masks on. So I hope you enjoyed the curator's walkthrough and the show that I've uh, launched for you. Please ask your neighbors who maybe had taken the um, curator's tour the other day um, some more details about the show they might remember. So also look at the artist's information books that has background on the artist as well as the artwork and read the text panels that go along with the art. So thanks so much for letting me give you a new show, and I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you.